So my name is Edric Norman and I'm an evangelist. Uh, a few years ago I just left everything and, and I followed the call of God, started preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and that's what I basically do. I'm, I'm going to share a bit with you what my life was before I met Jesus and, and what's, what's going on now and, and some of the things that I'm seeing in this moment. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. So maybe tell us about your life before you met Jesus. Let's hear that story. Yeah, so I actually gave my life to Jesus when I was six years old. And I remember it was the most beautiful thing. My father led me in, in what we call the salvation prayer. You know, is when you confess your life to Jesus. Um, he led me in that prayer a day, the first day of school. And I remember looking up at the skies and feeling the presence of God and it was amazing and, and you know since a young age I always spoke to God like I'm I'm speaking to you now it was it was real it was it was authentic you know it, it wasn't it wasn't weird or religious some stuff that I started to learn as I as, as I grew older you know um, we, we attended a church that was very I want to say conservative and very religious, you know. And I remember asking God this question one day because I looked at all of the people in the church and I asked them, you know what? And it was a very sincere question. I was not challenging God at all. I think I was nine years old and I asked them, God, if you are love, why is your people acting like this? Because even at that age, I could recognize hypocrisy. And I started just growing up, not wanting to be part of that, you know. And, and as I got to high school, I saw a bunch of students that, that would preach Jesus in the school, but then I would find them in the clubs on the weekends, you know. And so I started building this, this wall against Christians, and I started disliking them really a lot because they're the people that will preach, you're going to go to hell if you do these things. And at the you know behind the scenes they do these exact same things and i did not have time for for these types of people but without god and you will have no purpose and and so i had no purpose in life i grew up i did not finish school um, i just ended up being very rebellious and my father kicked me out of the house because i was very disobedient and, and dishonoring towards my parents and I was, I was out of the house for, for about a year. And then um, one day I phoned my mom and I asked her, uh, listen, I need a place to stay again. And, and in this time, my mother actually gave her life to Jesus. And she said that I have to go to Pretoria. She feels like the Lord says that I have to go to Pretoria. And in that time, I, I thought that was, that was nonsense. And, and, you know, I thought to myself, woman, you do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, but I had no choice. And so I went to go and live there with my aunt. And I remember going to church one Sunday with my aunt and walking into this auditorium of this church. It was a big church. Um, but I remember walking in there and for the first time in my life, I felt the presence of God, but I recognized it from when I was younger. So it's not the first time in my life, but the first time after that experience, I felt this again, and it freaked me out. And because it was, it was better than any, any high or any trip or anything that, that alcohol, whatever this world could have offered me, sex, drugs, and alcohol, it was better than all of that. It was a peace I felt at home. And I could not understand what was going on because I was it freaked me out, but it was so good I could not leave. And I went into the auditorium. I do not remember one word that the pastor preached, but I ran forward when I had the opportunity to give my life to Jesus. And, um, you know, some stuff happened after that where the devil just started coming and telling me two weeks after I gave my life to Jesus, the devil told me, Edric, you know, you're not going to amount to anything. And, and of course, in this time, I did not think it was the devil. But now I know that it was, you know, a lot of, a lot of voices in my head that said, you are under, you do not have a metric. You do not have experience. What are you going to do in life? Everyone threw you away. Your parents threw you away. So all of these things just rushing through my mind. And one day I uh, tried to commit suicide and the Lord woke me up and told me, Edric, what are you doing? And he told me that I love you. And I broke down 
because in that moment, it was the God who created everything who recognized me. And it was just that recognition that, that shifted my heart. It's like, he just noticed me, you know. I've got absolutely nothing to bring to him. I've got nothing good to give him. But he noticed me in this moment. And he told me that he loved me. Like, how can you, how can you love me? And the Lord told me that uh, you've got a misconcept of who I am. And so I started speaking to the Father. And um, like I'm speaking to you now, and I'll, I'll, I'll share the first time I spoke to the Father and he answered me back. I'll, I'll share this because this is where I realized that being a Christian is actually living in relationship with the Father, with God. That's why Jesus died was to restore that which was lost in the Garden of Eden. God the Father walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden. That was communion and union. That was relationship. And so you see, that's why Jesus died, was to restore that which was lost. And it was communion and union with God. It was relationship with God. And so anyway, so one day, like, I just got saved, and, and I'm very excited. But now I'm reading the Bible. And, and, you know, nobody told me how to read the Bible. And so I asked God this. I'm reading this Bible this morning. And I'm like, God, how do I just believe what the Word says? Because I'm very real now, you know. And, and I want to encourage people to be real with God. He sees right through you in any case. And I told, I told the Lord, like, I do not believe what this is saying. You know, I cannot just magically conjure up faith you know, and so I was reading this and I'm, God, I want to believe this. But in that moment, like, I just didn't feel it. So I went to the shop and I was still smoking cigarettes at that time. And so it was raining. And, and uh, I went to the shop, bought cigarettes. As I came out of the shop, now this morning I asked God this question. As I came out of the shop, it poured down and immediately it stopped. And I saw this double rainbow. And as I saw the double rainbow, the Lord told me that, Edric, I am a covenant-keeping God. And I was like, wow. And I remember that the rainbow re resembles the, the covenant because he made, from, from when I was still in, in Bible school, um, he gave that to Noah just to, 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 as a promise that he won't do that. And when I saw that, the Lord told me that I'm a covenant-keeping God. And that was the morning when I, when I asked the Lord, how do I just believe that? And so that was just one of the ways, you know, the Lord can speak in so many different ways. But that was the first time I encountered the Lord. And He actually responded to me, which was very special because He, he, he longs to speak to us. And so that is just my, my story of how I came to salvation. And um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, you mentioned something about that you were kicked out the house. How old were you when that happened? 16. 16. I gave my life to Jesus when I was 18. I finished grade 11. Um, I did not finish matric. Um, I just did not go to school for matric. I just finished grade 11. Yeah. Yeah. And then you obviously shared about your salvation experience now, about you going to the church and giving your heart to Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> was there anything that stood out about that service that you can specifically remember? just the presence of God, you know, it, it was no, there was no, it wasn't the, 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 the praise and worship, I love praise and worship, but it wasn't that, it was the presence of God, it was, it was, it yeah. was all of that, it wasn't the preaching, it wasn't the person, it was the presence of yeah. God. Uh, so then, um, uh, when you finish school, that period after you finish school, let's talk about the period until before you joined, joined, joined CFAN, and what oh, was wow. that, that period of your life like? Oh wow, yeah, yeah, so, so, what, so this basically all started, obviously, after I got saved. Um, when I gave my life to Jesus, I soon moved back to Richards Bay where I grew up. And in this time, my whole family gave their lives to Jesus. So my whole family got reconciled, which was beautiful. But now, in the back of my mind, is, is like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to God. And I was living in Matthew 6, verse 25, where it talks about do not worry. And it talks about God just supplying everything that we need. And I'm reading this and I'm, I'm telling God that, you know what, I do not have experience. I do not have qualifications. I do not have any of these things. But I know that you can do something. And, and so when I got back to Richards Bay, I applied for a job. Um, I needed to have matric to get the job. I told the people I did not have matric. And, and so with my, 
the, the interview was even miraculous on its own. I was, I was sleeping over at a friend's house and someone actually approached the house and asked me to email my CV in 11 o'clock at night. That night I emailed the CV and the next day I got the interview. Now my hair was very long. I'm a surfer. So I had this long surfer hair. And so now I'm sitting in this interview in front of this strict looking big guy and the first question that he asked me is, do you smoke weed? And I said no, but immediately it just opened up the opportunity for me to start preaching the gospel. You know, and I told these people of everything that I did, but how I got to Jesus. In, and afterwards, like after the interview, it hit me. It's like this might not have been the most professional thing to do. Um, but five minutes later, I actually got the job. I started working that exact day. And in this moment, the Lord also started teaching me about tithes and offerings, actually. Um, I never understood it. And so in, initially, I th everything that I thought about Christianity was very religious. But now I just put it over to God. And I told God, you know, this is in your word. And I'm just going to stand on it. And so what I did is with my first salary that I got, I gave everything to God. You know, and, and I like to call it um, stupid faith, but it's actually something we just have to live in because I knew that the Lord was going to supply and He was going to look after me, not of something that I could get out, but it was the thankfulness of, you know, the Lord made a way. I was not supposed to get the job because I did not have the qualifications or experience, but He made a way for me to. And it was only to be a machine operator. So this company, this is just how everything started. I've never, I've, I've always given my tithe and offerings because it is the Lord's money. It's not my money. I really believe that everything that I own is the Lord's. And, and it is. It's not just something. It is. It's a fact. It's something. It's in the Bible. It's truth. And so, you know, I've, I've always been giving this. And, and I've been work, I worked there for six years. In that period of six years, I got six promotions, which is totally unheard of. I still do not have any qualifications and, and I'm, not, I'm not encouraging people not to go and study, but I'm boasting in the fact of what the Lord can do because the Lord will qualify you even if you're not qualified. And if you just trust in the Lord, I ended up being the operators manager for this company and um, it, it went really well. It went really well for me. Um, and then one day, you know, I always knew that I was going to go into ministry. Um, and it was almost a year before I left the job that I started feeling this tugging. It's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. Um, I went surfing after work and I just told the Lord, you know what? I'm done with all of these things. I really want to just do what you've called me to do. I don't want to waste my time on this earth. You know, I've got everything that the world now deems as success. Not that I've ever found my comfort in, in finances or materialistic things. But I just told the Lord, like, I know these things cannot satisfy me. And I'm willing to give everything up, Jesus. Like, I just want to do what you've called me to do. And so that night I saw this ad of a thing called the Evangelism Boot Camp held by Christ for All Nations. And it's a thing where they train up people to do mass crusade evangelism. And at first, I did not think anything about it. But that night, I dreamt, and I just had an, a tremendous peace from the Holy Spirit to go. And so only 150 students internationally get chosen for this, for this uh, course. And it costs a lot of money, you know. Um, but I did not care. When the Lord told me to go, I left my job. I did my application and my resignation later on the, I think, on the same day. <laughs> And I sold my car before I even got chosen. And yeah, I ended up getting chosen. And, and it's, been, it's been the life till, till so far, yeah. yeah wow. Well, yeah, so, so there's something, uh, the, biggest, the biggest lesson, thing that I've learned in, in the past, in the past year and a half, two years, um, is something that I'm going to share with you guys. And, and um, you know, it's something that the Lord continuously brings me back to. You know, initially when, because I always knew that I was an evangelist. And initially, when I got accepted for this boot camp, it got postponed for a year, a year and a half. Um, because of COVID, I could not fly. And so now, 
I just want to give you some context. When this thing initially, when I got accepted, I had in my mind this idea of, I'm an evangelist. I have to go to this organization. I'm going to be trained up by the most you know, prominent evangelist in this world, probably by the most successful evangelistic ministry in this world. Like this is the perfect place for me to go. I need to learn. And this is, you know, I have to go. So this is going through my mind when I just initially got accepted. I'm like, this is the call of God in my life. And now I'm chasing the call of God. And I remember when I could not make it because of, I could not get my visa because of um, the COVID, the pandemic thing. And um, I remember standing at the back of church one day, the, the, actually the day after, um, the, the Sunday after I, I found out I could not go. And I stood at the back of church and there was this song playing. The song's name is called Confident from, from Stephanie uh, Gretzinger. Beautiful song. I love this. One of my favorite songs. And the song sings, I'm confident that your faithfulness will see me through. And in that moment, I was, my, my mouth was shut and because I'm, I'm very hectic upon like everything that comes out of my mouth needs to be real. It needs to be authentic and needs to be, it needs to come out of my heart. I mean what I say and say what I mean, you know, and, and I, t I told the Lord, you know what, I cannot sing. I cannot sing along with the song because my heart doesn't feel this way. It feels like, and I opened up to the Lord, I told him, it feels like you dropped me. It feels like I put all my trust in you. And, and I knew that I, I, I heard from you. And I remember the only response from the Holy Spirit in this time was, Edric, will you still trust me? And I just remembered the presence of God and I told him, yes, of course, I will still trust you. And it was difficult in this time, but it's something that I could not see at that moment that the Lord was busy with. And so for the next year, I just started connecting with a, a bunch of local churches, just started going out and doing, doing ministry and, and all of these things. And, and one very specific day that stood out to me is now I did not have a car, so I, I walked out to a rural area to go and minister to people one day. It was just me. Um, I had nobody with me, and, and it, it was not a very good day. Uh, nobody got saved that day, uh, nobody got healed that I prayed for. In fact, I got into an argument with a person who believes in, in Shembe, um, which, is a big, which is a big thing in KwaZulu Natal. It, it's, it's a false religion um, in Natal. And so it was not a good day. And I'm, I'm starting to walk back. And on top of all of that, one of the people that I used to work with that told me that I'm making a mistake to leave everything, drove past me and he stopped and now he's seeing me walk in a rural area and, and he asked me, and, and aren't you supposed to be in America? I told him, you know what, things didn't work out. Um, you know, it's, it's been postponed. I, I didn't actually have words to say for him because I was actually expecting a, like I told you so or something from him. And it was embarrassing, it was really embarrassing and he drove off and I continued walking and I was listening to a song called All Is For Your Glory from Jeremy Riddle and as I was walking it sings the song um, so put me anywhere just put your glory in me and I'll serve anywhere and just let me see your beauty and when I heard that I remember the presence of God falling and I told the Lord you know what I do not care anymore you can put me anywhere. I will do this for the rest of my life. I do not have to see the results. But Jesus, I will do anything just as long as you are there. Like, I need to see you. If, if your beauty is there, you are the only thing that I long for. And the only contentment that I found and the only satisfaction that I found was in Jesus and being with him. And not the things that I was doing for him anymore and, and, and not the call of God on my life, but it was just Jesus himself. And so fast forward to the next year, January, um, I ended up moving to Cape Town and working there with Christ for All Nations um, for about six months. And I remember just before I went to America for the boot camp, I was driving to someone's house and the song Confident 
started playing on my, had my phone plugged in. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit flashed back a bunch of things that happened, but especially that thing that I just told you where I was walking. And he flashed these things and he showed me how he turned my heart from initially wanting to follow the call of God on my life to I want to go there because that's where Jesus is. That's where he wants me to be. Not because that's what I need to do for him. And the Holy Spirit showed me this and he said, Edric, thank you for trusting me. And you see, in this last year and a half, unbeknown to me, the Lord was just working on my heart. It was, it was changing my heart. I remember just before boot camp, someone asked me this question, what are you looking to get out of this boot camp? And I had to think for a while, and I sat because I did not have an answer. And there's one, one thing, or I must say one name that came out of my mouth, and it was Jesus. And, and I could really see how, how my heart started to change and long after Jesus. And so... I went to the boot camp, and, and the boot camp changed my life. And let me tell you, if you are an evangelist, if you know that you are called for evangelism, I'm not here to promote this thing, but I'm telling you that if you know that you are called for evangelism, look at this thing, and if the Holy Spirit tells you, apply for it, because it will change your life and will set you on the right course for the call of God on your life. Uh, anyway, I went through the boot camp. I'm still processing things that happened there. Um, it, it was just amazing. And so it, what, what happens is you get like a three-month period where you have to be in Orlando, Florida, and they just do teachings, and you go on outreaches, and you, 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 there's a lot of things. It's just like they just plug you with 50 years' worth of ministry experience. They just plunge down into you. And then after that, you go to uh, a foreign country to go and preach the gospel to what you have actually learned now, you're going to put into action. And so our country was uh, Ghana, West Africa. So after boot camp, we, we got there. And I remember sitting in the bus. We landed in Accra, Ghana, on our way to Kumasi, Ghana. It was a six-hour bus ride. And I put my earphones in. All the other evangelists were sleeping and I started going through my songs and I saw the song Confident and I thought to myself, let me play this song. You know, almost celebrating, you know, it's a type of sentimental thing. I don't know. I just wanted to play this song. And so as I started to play this song, the Lord, he told me, Eric, do not, don't you get it? It was never about getting you through the boot camp. It was never about connecting you with these people. It was never about getting you on a platform, but it's always been about your heart. I just wanted to have your heart. And so that has been, that has been the theme, and, and the Lord has just constantly been, been reminding me about these things, you know, that, that being in ministry is, is just, it's surrendering everything. It costs you your everything, first of all, but it costs you your heart. Because this ministry it will never be able to carry you. Only Jesus will be able to carry you. The satisfaction that you find in Him. And we are first called to be sons and daughters before we are called to be anything else. And, um, you know, this has, been, this has been the thing that, that I've been revealed, that the Lord's been revealing to me. And, and I'm still learning it, you know. Um, yeah. And it's just sitting with the Lord. And, yeah, so... After our Ghana initiation trip, I went back to America. I had the opportunity to serve with CFAN. And um, <clears throat> after, after that, it was April of 2023, I came back to South Africa for one day. But it's because we had a big crusade happening in Zambia. And so we went to go and preach the gospel in Zambia. And I was there for a month. And then finally, the Lord told me to come back to South Africa. And so we are busy with things in South Africa, um, just going into churches, preaching the gospel on the streets, starting um, schools where we are raising up evangelists. And so this is, this is what, what, what is, I'm compressing everything now, but this is what, what we've been doing in, in Christ for All Nations at this time. And, and my experience, you know, if I, if I can... I can tell you of the, the, the most amazing miracles and signs and wonders, but, but really my heart is for people to, 
to follow God truly for who He is instead of what He can do and for us and through us. Yeah. The, yeah. <clears throat> so I think maybe two things that I was just thinking about and that I maybe want to ask you as well. You were referring back to that period of your life when you, you, you were a youngster and you were quite rebellious and stuff. What would you say to young people watching this video now that's going through that phase of their life? Well, what advice would you give them? What would I say to them? Yeah, to youngsters who are seeking. I think, I'm sure at yeah. that stage of your life you were seeking. Yeah. Um, I, I, would, I would tell them to, to go and, and, and ask God, um, you know, be real with Him. Go and sit and go and speak with Him. Um, obviously go and search out people who know about it. Um, Christians that walk in this thing, if you can go to a church um, and go and, and, and inquire there by them. And, but I really want you to, to also ask God because God will meet you. He will definitely meet you when, when you are seeking Him. Um, trust me, He is more... He's more um, keen to encounter you than, than you are to encounter Him. He's, he wants to save you. And so I know when you get still before Him and, and you just ask Him these questions and be real with Him. But I would, I would, I would tell you to go and seek out a Christian, um, someone who's walking in the ways of the Lord, uh, or go to a church and, and go and speak to someone there. Yeah. So... So the Lord told Moses to, to come up onto this mountain and only after you have come up onto this mountain you will know that I have spoken to you. And so a lot of times we've got these little ideas in our heads and uh, should we do it, should we not do it and it puts us in a place where we are stagnant, where we are not making a choice. I want to tell you just make a choice, do whatever you need to do, just move forward, keep on moving forward and you will see that the hand of the Lord will be upon your life. Um, whatever it is, just step out. Like Peter stepped out of the boat. Um, listen to this. Peter, you know, people criticize him because he sunk. He, he took his eyes off of Jesus. But let me tell you that Peter was the only disciple that encountered Jesus. The hand of God metaphorically encountered in his life. The other, other disciples did not. The other disciples sat in the boat, in their comforts, in the church, in their chairs, the easy life. The one that stepped out into something that's not always comfortable experienced the hand of God in his life. And so I want to encourage you to step out. And, and I've got a testimony of this. I, I went to a clinic one day uh, where the Lord told me to go and pray. It's five in the morning. It's cold. It's raining. And I'm sitting there and I told the Lord, I got my Bible in front of me and I told the Lord, I will climb out when it stops raining. And the Lord told me, no, you climb out now. And as I climbed out, it stopped raining. And the Lord told me that you never wait. You always move forward. I will make a way. It does not see, matter how it seems like. What you can see in the physical, He will make a way. You just keep on moving forward. And so I want to encourage you guys to just do something. Um, if it's something small, whatever it might be, you just step out in faith because God honors faith. And even if you make a mistake, Jesus will be there. Peter made a mistake, but Jesus was there. He just ended up in the arms of Jesus. So do not be afraid to make a mistake. Uh, I want to encourage you to move. Who is Jesus to me? Wow. He's my everything. He's, um, he's my comfort. He's my, he's my teacher. He's the one that I truly find satisfaction in. Um, you know this world can absolutely bring you nothing. There's no satisfaction that this world can bring you. Um, and, and Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, it's, it's, uh, that's where I belong. Um, you know, that's, I, I tell people when, when we are preaching the gospel and everything, that those things, you know, you're doing it for the king, and it's amazing. I'm called to do these things, and, and some of you might be called to do all of these things, but... Uh, they, uh, it will never take the place of just sitting with Jesus and just being with Him. Um, and the simpleness of that, just being with, not getting anything from God.
but truly just being with him for who he is. He's the loving father. He's the comforter. He's, he's always there. He's, he's the rock. And, and that's, that's who he is to me. He's, he's my everything. He's everything that I, ne I need. And um, yeah, he's good and faithful. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would pray. I would pray. And Jesus, just I thank you for, for, for the person watching this right now. And God, I ask that as they are sitting there right now, that you would touch their hearts, Jesus. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you to rest upon them. God, that you would show them who you truly are. God, if they might be on that sideline needing to go forward, Jesus, that you would give them clarity that you would give them comfort. If it's someone who's never heard about you before, Jesus, I ask that you'd reveal yourself to them. God, I ask that your presence will become so real to them, that that which you did on the cross will become so real to them. Holy Spirit, I ask that you'd encounter them all right now in the name of Jesus. Amen.